Hey all you cat campers, it is Jackson Galaxy, your lead cat camp counselor. And if you happen to have missed our September 2020 cat camp, you also missed this wonderful session with Megan Lincott, a fantastic artist. And uh, if you take a look at the catcamp.com site, uh, if you go under the prep section, you will see all of the supplies you might have needed uh, to paint along with Megan. And also, by the way, if you go down to the link also, if you go down to the description below, you'll see links on how to get to Megan's store, get all of her wonderful prints. And by the way, this is my favorite thing right about here. This is Megan's tarot cards. Oh, they're so cool. Hopefully she's still selling them. Hey, but go to the store and find out for yourself. And in the meantime, don't miss Cat Camp next time. Go to catcamp.com. You'll get information on upcoming camps and, and then you can get all ready to paint along with Megan next time around. All right, you guys, enjoy. Light, love, and mojo to you. I'm Megan Lynn Cott, watercolor illustrator of cats and other creatures. Welcome to the joy of painting your cat in collaboration with Jackson Galaxy's Cat Camp. Today I'll be walking you through an easy method to paint your cat. It'll only take about 15 or so minutes and it'll be a snap. Well that feels right, don't it? Now let's get started painting some happy little cats. Here are the supplies you would need. I tried to make them pretty easily accessible supplies. So they're things you can find at any art or craft store, certainly, but also maybe a well-stocked grocery store or drugstore, whatever. To your left clockwise, we have first our reference material. Um, I just printed that out on a regular printer. Your handy dandy little water container. Mine is well worn, clearly. Um, I have a palette, but you can also use a clean plate or something you don't really mind staining. I have a rag there to wipe my brushes off with extra paint or extra water. Um, I have three brushes there. They're very in size right now. Um, they're round brushes that are a six, a four, and a two, but really you can just use whatever maybe paintbrush comes with it as long as it's like a watercolory brush with soft bristles. Um, and then I have a paint palette that's really you could find that anywhere. It's um, just a regular run-of-the-mill paint palette, um, even like Crayola equivalent. Um, and then finally, we have the PDF that um, is available with this video to download the Joy of Painting Your Cat PDF. So I just printed that out on watercolor paper, but you can use any thick paper or cardstock. Just know that cardstock isn't going to be able to take as much water and layers as you would on watercolor paper. All right. Let's get started. All right, so I chose a tabby to paint because I think that's the most common cat coloring. Um, and we're gonna start by loading the brush with water and a little bit of uh, pink and some red and some purple and a little bit of the ochre yellowy color. Um, we're gonna kind of paint the parts of the cat where um, the fur is a little bit thinner. So around the nose and uh, the whisker area and a little bit around the ears as well, um, kind of defining the, the white spaces of the cat right now. If you look at the reference image on the left, you can see the parts where the shadow is. I'm kind of just pulling the paint down um, into those areas to kind of start to define the fur. Um, I'm painting a little bit around the eyes. I actually really like to um, Give a little bit of pink around the eye socket. Um, I just think it makes it look a little bit more lifelike. Just again, defining the areas right now. Um, and now I'm gonna make a little bit of brown to go over like the entire cat fur area. So I've took some black and some rusty brown color um, and a little bit of yellow, some of that ochre again. You need a really nice like tabby coloring, but you can, uh, use this for any any cat coloring. Um, I just chose this one as the most common. A lot of folks have tabbies. Um, but you can use like the those kind of neutral colors like the black and the rust and the yellow ochre um, and the orange even to 
help do most cats. Um, kind of just blocking in the largest sections of tabby coloration. So it's not going to define the, the lines too much right now, maybe a little bit around the classic tabby M, but um, I'm just going to kind of play it loose right now and try to block in a lot of color. I love that like classic tabby M line um, that's on their faces. It's so cute. Uh, again, pulling the brush in little strokes to kind of get a little bit of fur texture. Um, and following the lines that are both in the reference image and also um, in the template that I gave you. Taking a little bit of water and uh, diluting that color a little bit so we can help define the shadow. Um, blocking in those spaces. You can do this with your other colorings of cat. Um, we're not worrying too much about the details right now. Um, so if you're filling in an all gray cat or an all black cat or an all white cat even, you're not going to just take black or white paint because we don't have white paint. Um, and I don't usually use black paint. We want to use like a combination of those things. So look at if you have a white cat, look at the colors that are in this. Like, you can see a lot of the white um, fur in this cat in particular has a lot of blues in it and a lot of purple, um, a lot of pink. So you're going to take those colors and, you know, test it on your palette first. If you're not sure about the color, um, you can do a little line off to the side of your page to see how it's going to take on there. Um, just filling in those cat colors. And I didn't add a tail in... Um, this drawing because I don't know what your cat's tail looks like. So we just kind of drew a, a generic tail area um, and I figured you could add your tail wherever you wanted to. And I'm just adding it there on the side because this cat has its tail curled around its feet. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more of the nose and ears right now. So I took a little bit of pink and a little bit of red and adding that rust again. I really like like a rusty brown and that ochre color. I feel like those are kind of the main colors I'll use, even in whatever color of cat. Just putting in um, spaces where the fur is thin, in the ears, and around the mouth. And again, um, not really going to start to do too many details yet. And I also like, um, it's kind of a little bit of a, a personal painting thing that I do with cats is that I put a little bit of pink right around the feet too, um, even if it's a black cat. And maybe your cat licks its belly a bunch. We'll put a little bit of pink there too, um, just because you've got that really fluffy downy fur down there. Um, and I also, like I said before, put a little bit of pink right around the eye socket, just because it's like where flesh meets those juicy bits. <laughs> kind of gross. Um, but just putting a little bit around the eyes as well makes it look more lifelike. And um, I'm gonna start doing the uh, color of the eye and these two greens are super bright. It's like a teal and uh, a lime green. So I added a little bit of that ochre too. You can add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown in there to help give it um, more lifelike quality and less vibrant and in your face out of the box. So I'm just doing the top, uh, just under the top lid right now um, because that will be where the darkest part of the cat is, uh, the cat's eye is. Um, we've got a little bit in the bottom corner too that we might add later, but mostly it's in the top. Now I'm going to define some of the uh, fur in the ears, a little bit more purple, just layering my colors in here to help get it a little bit darker. Starting to define the lines of the feet and its cute little white socks. 
and now I'm going to add um, a little bit of this yellow coloring here and there. Um, the whole kind of right side of this tabby is kind of in a yellow cast. So I'm just kind of giving more and more layers to this as I go. Um, and this is even a quicker way than I would normally do it. Just layering these washes over and over again. Um, and you can take these techniques and again apply it to any cat coloration. Um, the colors you mix are going to be a little bit different. Like if this was an orange cat, I would have added a little bit more orange in there, um, just adding it to the rust and the yellow that I had already. Um, now we're going to get a little bit of the definition of the bottom of the eye or the color of the bottom of the eye. I mixed um, the brighter yellow and the lime green, and I'm just going to go over the whole, the whole eyelid uh, or the whole eye right now. Um, and I added some of that yellow ochre in, and I'm just going to take a drier brush and pull some of that color out um, to kind of make it look a little bit rounder. So I'll pull the middle color out um, where the eye is, the eyeball is the roundest. Just taking some of that color out so you kind of get a stain all the way around and kind of a circular spot. And I just went over the color I had done before too. Um, and that'll stay darker because we made that original wash. Getting some more layers in the corner of the nose where it's the darkest in value. Um, making some little corners of the mouth, a little bit more layer there. And just hitting those bottom bottoms of the feet where the that's where all the weight of the cat is. So you wanna kind of make those feel heavier. And now we're gonna go in um, and start to define the stripes of the cat. Get into the juicy bits. <laughs> so I'm mixing a uh, black and brown, that brown rusty color and some blue in there too. Um, just kind of give it some flavor and uh, it's more fun if you make noise while you're doing it. So you go <laughs> just like Bob Ross used to do. Um, and if you get too much paint in one area, don't worry, you can always pull it out with um, a dry brush like we did before or a clean brush. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Kind of blend those areas. I wiped some of the paint off with my rag and I'm just going to blend those areas a bit. Defining the M of the tabby. Um, most cats, if you look at them, have kind of tabby markings. Even black cats or white cats kind of have, I think that that's how their brow and the muscles of their brow go. They kind of give those creases there to look like the tabby M. Even if it's not as pronounced as it is on a tabby, you've still got those like fur markings. So if you look at your cat, you can kind of see those little grooves in their fur. At least that's what I've noticed. That's my scientific estimation of that. Um, pulling these details out in tiny little strokes. You don't have to go this fast. I'm just doing this quickly. Um, and if you put some black around the nose, just be really light with it. And if you get too much, just pull it off with some water and a clean brush. Um, and I'm pulling outward with uh, 
these little strokes to get the tabby lines. They don't have to be perfect. Um, there are no happy accidents in this. There are no uh, mistakes, only happy accidents. That's what it is. Again, more fun if you make noises while you're doing it with a little ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> getting some more color on there. Just mixing the same colors again. A little bit more blue. I'm going really lightly on these areas. You can always get darker. That's the great part about watercolor is that you can make your um, first washes really light to begin with and then get darker and darker and darker. And your painting isn't, this quick watercolor isn't going to be super dark anyway. Um, paint lightens as it dries. So it's not gonna be a super dark painting to begin with. You're kind of just relying on the beauty of how watercolor dries to give you those nice blooms and areas of color. And I'm getting darker and darker on these stripes, you can tell. So I'll go over the ones that I'd done before. Give a little love to the eye. And don't forget the tail. Um, and if you kind of had done a blobby tail before, you can kind of help to find those areas. And tabbies have those nice little stripes on their tail. Um, even my cat, who is a, a ginger fluff, um, he has little stripes in his tail too. So this is pretty common with cats. I've even, even seen some white cats that have like little stripes in their tail as well. Getting a little bit darker on those stripes. And if you get too dark, you can blend it out, take off, um, start to wash out some of the color in the brush and then just use what's already on the paper to uh, kind of pull that out with your brush. Um, defining the eye, go really carefully over these areas um, because it's really easy to get blobby. And uh, if you screw it up, um, like I said, no mistakes, only happy accidents. But if you do screw it up and you're not happy with it, that's why I gave you two cats on one sheet of paper. So you just start over and start the beginning, the video at the beginning. Um, and now I'm utilizing those washes that I had made originally um, to define the stripes. And I'm kind of going over there with some watery versions of that black, brown, blue color to help darken up some of those spaces. It's not gonna be as dark as it is on this cat, but. And I'm taking that same gray that I've washed out and uh, even putting it in some of the white spaces define that fur and those the white tuxedo of this taffy. And uh, if you don't have a brown color, um, you start to think about your complementary colors. So red and green or orange and blue or purple and yellow, those will create a nice brown or gray for you as well. And experiment with um, combining different colors in your palette to help define the color of your cat. And don't be afraid if you've got like, you're like, I see green in their fur. Go for it, man, try it. There's no, nothing wrong. This is your world. You can experiment in it. And honestly, you don't have to show anybody if you don't like it at the end. So I took some of that gray and I watered it down a little bit to uh, create the whiskers. And I just pull those in one stroke. Don't try to go over those in more than one stroke. Um, you just want to pull the whiskers once. So be really gentle with them. Very light. Um, I'm just adding a little bit more color around the eye. A little bit more of that green. And I added a little bit of teal. Just, just around the iris. Um, I find cats with green eyes have sometimes just a little bit of blue right around the iris of the eye. Um, so there you have your cat. I could honestly go over this 
over and over again and like keep fiddling with this painting. That's kind of what I do with my longer form ones, just keep going and going and going until I feel like I'm done. So please uh, get at me with any questions you have specifically. I don't know that I can help you paint your cat step by step completely, but um, I've kind of given you the outlines here. So there you have it, I've painted a tabby tuxedo cat, but you can use these principles to paint any color of cat. I've painted a silver point tabby or a black or gray cat or a ginger fluffy cat. Using this same template, you can paint any of those cats and most of the cats that are in your home, really any color of cat that you'd like. Well, thank you so much. I'm certainly glad you joined us here today. And from all of us at Cat Camp, Happy painting. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now.